Hi, welcome to the Rogue Home Cinema demo room here in Perth. We're in the entry, the South Foyer, a beautiful atrium that sets us up, gets us nice and relaxed with a drink or two before we make our way into the cinema room where all the adventure and the magic and the rest of the world gets completely left behind. So let's check it out. So upon entry of a cinema room, you want to have control straight away. I know the obvious stuff is going to be lights on or off or even better in a cinema space, you want the feature lights, the welcome lights, the alluring lights are going to make the room really fun, entertaining. And again, these spaces shouldn't really feel like any other room in the house. So it really does set you up for the sense of adventure. Uh, in our space, we run multiple control systems uh, and the most fundamental one is going to be the keypad itself. So here we've got the lighting programmed in. Very simple, the top button's on, all the lights come on, bottom one's off so a cleaner or a guest can easily work out how to operate the room. But then we've got some fun stuff as well. We've got welcome lighting, featuring around the bar, and even a few little tricks where should I double tap some of these buttons, some other things in the room will operate as well. I always like the fact that when you wrap up for a show, you can actually leave the room, double tap the off button, not only do the lights go out, but the entire system shuts down and you're back into standby mode. There's a number of ways of controlling the cinema. The keypad, really great because it's always in the same spot. You don't have to think, it's just like a light switch, simple, ready to go. Another awesome option, something more visual and something that connects to people much easier is through a touch screen, an iPad type device. Now the issue with iPads in a theater room is you've always got to keep them charged up and people tend to wander off with them. So we recommend a dedicated iPad in this case, just for the cinema room, and it has a docking station so it always lives in a particular spot, but indeed you can take it off the wall, take it to the seat, stream your favorite music, control and connect to the room and the data and the content available. And then when you've wrapped up, back on the wall, fully charged, ready for next time. The atmosphere and decor is always that unique, special touch to every cinema. We've gone for that little bit of a gold class sort of feel and these beautiful brandy colored curtains really just adds that extra sort of soft, warm opulence to the space that we have in our room. We've got the curtains in here for a couple of purposes. One's to actually hide some equipment, another element's to hide some light. Should we have guests entering and coming in and out of the room, we can block light uh, for getting onto the screen. And at the same time, who doesn't just like a beautiful plush, flush and clean entry to the cinema space? So a critical part of having absolute comfort in the cinema, of course, is the seating. It's the only real touch point you have. So you can sit back, relax, and actually really focus on the sound and the picture. That's how the director and the, the artist really connect and communicate the story of the film. So if you're not in a seat that's gonna be comfortable and for the long term, so we're talking you know, two hour, three hour long movies, you need that comfort. And particularly with the recliner style seating, you can actually get that beautiful support. You can start to forget about that whole sense of gravity. And that's when the sound really takes over the senses of the body. So let's, selecting the right seat is really important. In our showroom here, we've actually got four different styles of seating just in this room alone, with a range of other seats available, depending on someone's particular taste in the style, as many seats can be crafted, stitched, and colored to match a certain theme or finish. At the same time, we need to make sure that fundamentally, you're choosing a seat that's comfortable for you. So the other real touch point in a cinema room is gonna be the remote control. You're gonna need something that's tactile, easy to use, logical, so you can just keep focused on the action or the selection and action the play button with ease. Certainly, an array of remote controls which would usually control the cinema room, they are tucked away. That's for the installer's job. We roll everything into an easy, easy to use remote control. And not only is it nice to have the touch screen and the logos and the colored sort of icons that guide you to where you want to be, but also tactile hard button remote. To be able to 
feel the buttons is a really important aspect as you're focusing on the screen. If you wanna grow that little bit of extra volume, if it's say YouTube and you're watching music clips and you're like, let's give this some extra, you need to be able to feel that button intuitively and squeeze up the volume. That's where an iPad or a smartphone is actually not very good because you need to open the phone, make sure you're on the app, and then you're having to scroll the volume or select up, down, left, right on a surface which isn't tactile. So you need to look at the screen to be able to actually control what you want to do. So hard button remote control just makes things seamless and simple. Although there's not 50 buttons on this remote, there's only the fundamental buttons we need and then the touch screen guides you through the rest of the show. Best way of designing the seating plan around a cinema is really around the key family members. You know, how many people will be enjoying the cinema together at any given time, regularly, week by week. They're the seats that are really important. They're the ones that get the luxury standard and where the uh, audio and video engineering really focuses around. But of course, we like to entertain these kids' sleepovers and birthday parties, these sporting events. So we can really want to look at, well, how can we be more flexible to entertain outside just the family? And that's where some front row beanbag rows can be a really great way of adding those extra seats. It becomes a great front, uh, front row in a stadium set of seating because they're naturally set lower than the primary recliners. So you've got like a front row built in without even having to add like a sunken area of the room or having to raise the seats at the back of the room. It's gonna cost you more time, more money. And when we rise seats up and build platforms, they can actually have some acoustic challenges. So the least of these features we need to worry about, then the more we can focus on the key elements of the room that are really gonna count. Now, the other great thing with having a bit of space in a cinema, even for this one row room, is we do have room behind the seats as well. Now, this is important acoustically, so we have that beautiful ambience and spaciousness of the sound. Um, we also wanna avoid being too close to a seat uh, or, a, or a wall, sorry, where the sound can sound a little bit boomy and, and not quite right. So the bean bags, a great front row location. Primary seats are where the family of the home, they get to enjoy the room week by week. And you'll notice that the seats are a wee way off the back wall. That's done because we want nice spaciousness and the effects of the sound to envelop the listeners. And we need a bit of space for that to happen. As a bonus in this room, we've got enough space here to have a, like a bar, stall, back row, for those sporting events. So we bring in the bar stools from the kitchen area and the breakfast bar. We load them in along the back. We can get about six more people uh, propped up. And again, another level of height in the room. So you've got beanbag, primary row, bar stool roll. We've actually got a stadium seating of three in this room. And it's only here when we really need it. And we get a really almost triple the capacity of the seats yet the room is designed to perform around the family members and it just works fantastically. We have a lot of fun in this space, entertaining a whole bunch of people, but then to be fair, 70% of the time, it's actually those center two seats that are used most of the time and that zero compromise. Just think of the two seats in a Ferrari or a sports car, they're the ones that really count, but we've got the luxury of having this extra space to actually entertain people as well. So the flooring of the cinema, it does certainly play a role both acoustically and of course visually. Now in this room, currently it's a pretty neutral sort of charcoal gray, um, which functions really well. So we've got pretty low reflection, which means from the seat to the screen, really these little distraction and we're focused on the video image itself. Now you could use timber floors and a rug uh, or we've chose carpet and with carpet we do get some acoustic qualities and it certainly can form part of the acoustic plan for the room. So these no fast and sharp yes or no as to which way to go with that, though it, does, it is and does need to be part of the acoustic plan. I love the charcoal black finish because ultimately you're gonna have bits of popcorn and bits and pieces come into the room. 
And if it's pure black, I can tell you it's like a car, it's gonna look dirty more times than not. So do yourself a favor, avoid pitch black, although I'm the guy that loves a super dark black room because it means that the pitch is just so profound in these spaces. But yeah, do yourself a favor, and maybe back that off a little bit so the cleaning and the general style of the room is not gonna be so dramatic to look after. So we've got a few plans on some style in this room though. Uh, the carpet's sort of doing a pretty easy job and ultimately when we demo this space, people are very fixated on the ultra high definition picture on show. But again, it's a way of adding personality, some flair, some real glamour or luxury into the space. So we've, we've got a few samples here that we have been working on and we're really excited to shortly showcase uh, more styles and layers of our style in this particular room. So we've got the black star concept here, which is gonna be super awesome and tie in really nicely with that sort of gold lounge theme that we've got. There's various sort of patterns and always sticking to those darker sort of tones around the carpets working really well. I think for us, the, uh, the black star to me really just gives you that extra sort of flair and that little bit of fun, which uh, you know, cinema is all about. I always think of the sci-fi universe when it comes to cinema and it's a nice way of theming that in in a subtle way through the use of the carpet pattern so there's really one thing people are in this room to look at and it's fundamentally going to be the picture entertainment and there's only one way of really doing cinematic movie experiences properly and that's the big screen i mean going out to the cinema is always about the big screen and there's no point trying to do anything less than that. People ask, well, what side screen should we have? Well, it all depends on how far back you're sitting. Though, if you want to feel like you're smack bang in the middle of a real, authentic, commercial, properly designed cinema, then you're going to have to go big. And our seating here, we're 3.4 to 3.5 meters back from the screen. And yes, our screen here is actually over that distance and width. We're actually around three and a half meters of width with the same seating distance. So that means that we've got that real immersive impact, just like the director intended. And that's utilizing the CinemaScope technology. That is the screen is much wider than a typical TV shape because you'd remember watching those movies on the TV, you have the black bars. Why is that? the content was recorded and captured much wider. Why is wider good? Well, it's obvious when we think about our limit of eyesight is actually much more expansive horizontally than it is height wise. And of course, why is that important? Well, we live on the ground and if there's gonna be danger or something attractive that we want, it's gonna be inside this plane and there's gonna be rather little uh, above us to worry about. So the cinema and the movies and the movie magic, it's all really designed around the human style of how we experience the world. So beautiful, big, cinematic, wide screens, absolutely draw you into the story and there's nowhere else to go. So this screen is really big and you may be wondering where do the speakers go because we're literally running out of room uh, to actually put them. And it's a good question. And the ultimate place for the front speakers is actually behind the screen. It's where the uh, actual commercial cinemas put them as well. Now that is quite a challenge because we want great sound out of our most important speakers, which are the front three speakers. We call them the, uh, the LCRs, standing for the left, the center, and the right. And those speakers are where 80% of the movie soundtrack really comes out of. It's where almost all the music comes out of. They're absolutely critical. And then we go and stick a screen in front of them, which sort of really takes away the purpose of resolution. However, a quality, acoustically transparent screen like this, or an AT strength screen, is going to minimize the impact of any sound issues while gaining a big benefit for sound actually, which is the fact that our, our speakers now match up, particularly the center channel, right there, where the dialogue of the actor and the visuals of the actor is 
teed up, synced up with the location of the sound. So the visual and the sound connect together. Your mind isn't having to try and join the dots, it becomes more seamless. There's that willing suspense of disbelief. It's to happily, willingly believe in the unbelievable, all for the sake of share enjoyment and getting that center channel right up there behind the picture is a really critical part of getting that right. So specialty screen and some specialty tuning can ensure that that speaker is gonna sound clear, lively, natural, and positioned in the very best possible location. The other challenge though, is now we've got a screen that has effectively holes through it or a woven effect to allow sound go through and yet we want a solid picture. So the technology and the quality of the screen is absolutely critical. I mean, this is the only thing you're actually looking at. I mean, yes, you're looking at the projected light from the projector, but the screen is the actual thing you're focusing on. So for video performance, it's a big deal. And if we're gonna have speakers behind the screen, it's a massive deal. Never skimp out on this part. It is a major component of really feeling that immersion, the impact and maintaining and elevating that front stage of soundtrack where it all just blends in and becomes absolutely magical. So one of the tricky parts of the great cinema is getting the right ambience in the room. Now ambience or the atmosphere can be looked at in two major ways. One is the visual side. How does it feel visually? Does it have harmony and flow? Does it have that intrigue and excitement that going out to the movies really would bring to you if you went out to the movies? The other factor is how does it actually sound? The ambience and the atmosphere of the sound in the room. Now, a home cinema is scientifically, acoustically, a small space. That is, the sound waves are gonna be hitting the walls, bouncing off each other, colliding, echoing, fluttering. It's actually quite a chaotic situation. So to control that, we can have dampening and scattering and a range of different products on the side walls in particular the ceiling and back walls, and of course the floor plays a role as well. So to control the sound, that product is gonna have a certain substance, size, shape, and color to it, which now impacts the visual atmosphere as well. So the acoustics and interior design really bind to be one of the same thing. If you're gonna do make something look pretty, you're probably gonna change the sound character of the room. At the same time, if we put the old classic concept of the eggshells on the wall, or lots of curtains everywhere, then that's gonna start to dampen and manage the sound, but is that really the look and style that you're after? In this room, we're currently showcasing our enterprise cinema concept, where we've created a, a design which allows us multiple points of acoustic control, some really great flow through the room as far as a visual effect where it leans down towards the screen as a focal point and the seats sort of nestle in side the panels that ascend their way up to the back of the room. So we've got a nice visual flow to this space while managing those sound field acoustics, reflections and all that crazy stuff while also giving us a few other opportunities in the way of lighting. We can have a nice gentle shadow edged backlighting that starts to add that extra wow factor in the room and again pulls you out of that everyday living. If you walk into a cinema room and it looks much the same decor as your living room, you're probably gonna remember you're still at home and it's not quite the same as going to a space that really says, hey, you're anywhere you could be and then takes you into the movies. So the great thing with the lighting is it adds that big wow factor welcome Though, of course, when the movie starts, these lights can turn off and that feature becomes invisible and the performance of the room is all focused around the audio visual experience. So not only are these great for managing all those sound, adding some flow to the room, we're also hiding a whole bunch of cables and we're hiding a whole bunch of speakers as well. So this room's super clean. It doesn't look like a high-tech room as such. Um, all of that is behind the scenes 
hidden by the fabric panels, allowing the sound to pass through and be managed just in the right quantity. With the enterprise design, it allows us to focus our design efforts into a concept that fits your room with a design style and aesthetic that you know is gonna be what you want by seeing the showcase work we've done already. So the enterprise cinema concept actually came from years of developing various acoustic concepts and rooms. And this pattern just kind of kept showing up. So it's become a bit of a trademark or signature style for us now. Something that a lot of people love and allows us to focus our design efforts, um, both stylized and acoustically. The enterprise concept is very flexible and fitting in a wide range of rooms. So chances are we can do this in your room as well. For those that want a more unique or bespoke, a little bit of a different style, uh, then we can move through to our Odyssey design services, which are completely custom and allow a whole different aesthetic in the room, while importantly, getting the acoustic fit out right still. It can often be done through a lighter, sheer type curtain material, which has a very clean aesthetic. And again, all the behind the scenes technology and acoustic speakers and cabling can hide behind that sheer curtain. So there's a number of styles and ways of doing this. The Enterprise here being a really popular one for us over the last few years. The idea of a cinema is to make you feel like you could be absolutely anywhere. It's all up to the choice of the movie and the director's journey that they're gonna send you in. Which means you don't wanna feel like you're in your own home or even in a room at all. And that's where going for the darker tones on the ceiling can give you that feeling where actually maybe you're in infinity, you're in space, you could be anywhere. And that's where our ceilings are often into a, a dark finish. So we don't actually feel a sense that these are ceiling. Wouldn't it be nice in life to feel like there's no ceiling whatsoever? You can do anything you want, and that's the feeling you want when you're in the cinema room. Now, some ways of dressing this up and making it even feel more infinite is having that feel of the universe, the starry lights, and it's that spectacular sort of spacious feeling that we feel and we sense when we see the stars at night. And the starlight features have been hugely popular in these rooms. Again, that sense of escapism is absolutely there. We've got a little bit of starlight featured here in our own demo room, and these even can change color and theme with the room as well, which adds a really nice effect while listening to music in particular. The construction allows us to ensure that we have the right amount of sound control as it's a porous material. We actually gain some absorption and acoustic qualities out of this finish at the same time. Always love it when we have a one product serving several duties. In this case, we've got lighting effects and acoustic control and the sense of just really that spacious feel in the room. So these two concepts of lighting in a cinema room. One is the primary lighting, the lights over the seats and, and the task lighting, the everyday lighting that you need to function in the room. Could be mainly to clean up the popcorn. Uh, and then there's the feature lighting as well, such as the star lights, the beautiful colored shadow edge lighting we've got featured here as well. For primary lighting, we usually have at least two different channels. Even in a smaller room, we have a set of lights over the seats, which are quite focused. They're narrow beam, they're gentle, and they just tend to have enough light to keep you comfortable and seeing what's going on, such as the teacup or the uh, remote control. Enough light over the seats at your comfort level while not getting any light at all, all the way up front on the screen. Meanwhile, a set of screen lights are a great way to help welcome you into the room. Just like in a real commercial cinema, they always splash that light on the screen. So we always really like to wash the light down the screen. Provides more light in general, but really it's a pretty cool feature. Now above me is our mid lights. This is great for that beanbag row. It sort of just really keeps the light focused in the middle here. Gives us that extra dispersion around the whole room so we can really light the room up when we do need to clean it and work in here. So separate again from the seating and a feature I absolutely love is the ability for these lights to actually change mood as the lights dim down. So right now I'm under the full power, it's a white clean light. And then as we back this lighting down all through the iPad here, you can see that this beautiful 
golden tone starts to set into the light itself. So now we've got that like candle lit dinner effect when we've got that nice moodiness in the room. Now, when we're watching the movie, the most important thing for the lights to do is actually to turn off completely so we're not polluting the screen at all and we can see the most vivid, vibrant and clean picture possible from our projection system. Movie sound has evolved dramatically over 100 years. In fact, cinema started with no sound at all. It moved to live music, finally some recordings to add into the movie so we can hear what is really the most important part of the story is the dialogue. Today, that has elevated to a whole new level where the soundtracks are, again, working on how we actually experience life. Now for video, I mentioned that we see wider than we do up and down, hence the cinemascope screens. Now for sound, we're actually here in pretty much a spherical 360 degree way. And for sound, it never turns off. So when we close our eyes and sleep at night, video is shut down. When it comes to sound, we're always listening. It's a safety thing built in. So we're actually super, super sensitive to sound, our environment and the spaciousness of the atmosphere and the acoustics of the spaces that we're in. And really uh, sound I find is often a little bit, um, maybe not underdone, but underestimated by people. It's easy to get tied up on the, the big vivid picture when in fact it's the acoustics and the sound that really gives us the sense of being there. Now, where has sound gone to today? Well, we've moved from 5.1 surround sound, the DVD era of the 90s, actually gave us a front three speakers, our traditional stereo, where the music and traditional sound came from, adding a center channel, so that dialogue channel up behind the screen, so we get clear, concise dialogue, a narrative that is just simple to understand and listen to. And then we added the surrounds or the industry added the two set of surround speakers in to add some ambience, to add some effects. And it worked pretty well with indeed the point one, which is the subwoofer channel. So we need some bass in the room. If we didn't have the dedicated bass speakers, all the other speakers around the room have to be really, really big. And that costs a lot of money. So we can have smaller speakers around the room and then we got the bass speaker to give us the impact down low. Now that, which I just mentioned, is still 1990s DVD technology. So what's happening in cinema today? Well, it's got a whole lot more exciting. First of all, the resolution of the sound is much greater. It's not compressed and, and sort of compacted like a like standard definition video, it is much cleaner, much more realistic in its actual quality and detail. And there's lots more speakers. So in this space, in our primary listening uh, demonstration, we have now seven speakers around the room by adding an extra two speakers at the back of the room. That is now makes it 7.1 with the subwoofer. And then it goes even further. You might have heard of Dolby Atmos. If you haven't, don't worry, it's coming your way soon. It's on Netflix, it's on Apple, it's on Blu-rays, it's even coming out on gaming systems as well. What is Dolby Atmos? Well, it is actually sound that now pre um, presented above and around you in the height layer. Why is that important? Well, we do listen primarily around this sphere, but we've got a whole lot of reflections and activity overhead. And if you enjoyed demoing those helicopter scenes in the 90s on DVD, well, I can tell you Dolby Atmos takes that to another whole level. So we actually have, um, primarily we go for four additional speakers up on the ceiling and the height layers of the room. That sound is angled back down to the audience. And it, we've now got the Atmos object based sound. So these are objects of sound fields that the audio designers have created in the soundtrack, reproduced on the fly in your cinema room to create that cricket, that overhead helicopter, that flyby, that lightning bolt coming at you from pretty much every direction or any direction. So Dolby Atmos sound, super excited. And it's not just, like I say, 
found on the you know, specialty discs. It's actually available on streaming as well. So it's very accessible content and taking advantage of that technology is just wonderful and it, it gives back in spades. So with more speakers than ever, playing with high resolution and higher levels than ever before, then yeah, our room needs to have its own acoustic signature that promotes that natural studio sound and doesn't confuse it. So you can just imagine if we just put all of these systems into any ordinary room with bare walls, then the sound from 13 or so speakers bouncing around that small space, it's actually gonna be more chaotic and confusing, actually uncomfortable to a listener versus clear, concise, and, and suspenseful. Watching A Quiet Place 2 the other day and the monsters are coming from all sorts of directions absolutely terrifying so for comfortable listening the room plays such a massive role of sound the other thing is with the subwoofers uh, we we always run at least two uh, in this room we have four subwoofers running now yes we want lots of powerful bass but we need the room, the sound to be smooth tight clean over all of the seats and when we have just one sub inside a, uh, a rectangular room the sound waves bounce around the room. Some seats actually have a cancellation point where the waves knock each other out. Other locations have a big boomy peak and it can be really inconsistent. So a major component of any cinema is actually the fundamental analysis of your rectangular room to find out what frequencies are a problem, where the seat should go, and then what distribution of subwoofers balance out that sound. So you just hear that boom, that cracking kick bass, just like it should be, and not the fluffy, muddy sort of sound that a basic installation is only ever going to achieve. So sound technologies come quite a way, but nothing like video as more and more data, more data speed, more capacity has allowed for higher and higher definition video. So in our showroom here, we actually showcase three different levels of technology. And we start with a high definition projection system with a good bright color space uh, and very affordable and allows systems to get up and running. Second unit here, we actually move into a true 4K high resolution or ultra resolution uh, projection system. We have laser technology. So we're moving away from the lamp based technology here into the brand new light sources. So laser allows the unit to run for like 10, 10 years, like the whole life of the projector. There's no maintenance involved with changing the globe. A beautiful, stable and powerful light source gives a really vibrant, really clear picture. And these projectors are not just more bright, but they're also saturate with deeper color as well. There's a video standard uh, that home has always been running on, the high definition standard in what we call standard dynamic range. And then there's the commercial cinema standard or DCI, digital cinema incentive. And that, that's what the commercial cinemas use. That's what the studios use. And at home, they, they kind of package it down. Not anymore. So we can get that true big DCI color space so we've got deeper, more natural colors, and that's a big deal. To the human eye, the number one most important thing, it's shiny things. It needs to be bright, it needs to be dynamic. And the number two, we're actually most sensitive to color. We really want a rich, natural, deep color, and then we wanna lay into that the resolution, so the fine detail is actually sort of third rank to those other two priorities. So as we look at projection technology, we're looking at all of these fundamental elements, knowing that that's gonna actually be the attractive, the exciting part for the audience. So really excited by this unit, and it even has a fancy add-on component. We've sort of hotted this projector up with the use of a cinematic lens system, which actually gives us even more resolution and even more brightness on the screen, which gives it more pop. Now the third projector we've got here is our premium unit. It's the Barco projector. Barco, very famous for actually building most of the commercial spec units out there that have about 60, 70% market share in the commercial space. Now that unit is going to a true 
P3 color space, so that's our reference color space. It's very bright, it has extremely high resolution, and from the start to the finish, everything is engineered to exact standard. The lens on this thing is extraordinary. Now, if you're into photography, you'll know that a good camera is, you know, two, three thousand dollars. Well, a great lens could cost you ten or fifteen thousand dollars. So there's one thing to have the digital technology, there's another thing to get the result that you're looking for, in our case, out of the projector and onto the screen, so the lens systems play a critical role. Once you move your way up into a DCI or a higher spec unit, they're starting to look at high quality all glass lenses, um, brand new light technologies such as LED, laser, high resolution chipsets, full color range, fantastic dynamic range, and you're getting really in this unit up here, a better picture than what I see in 90% of commercial cinemas out there. So the quality picture at home, absolutely. You've got something impressive to absolutely inspiring to realistically some of the finest video you can get anywhere in the world and you don't need to leave the house for it. So Cinema Room is that Moody's place to escape to sound is loud in here and we want to escape from the rest of the world so isolating ourselves from the noise and the atmosphere out there is important likewise we don't want the sound in the cinema room upsetting the rest of the house sleeping people or neighbors for those people that have you know, a bit of diversity in the family so sealing up the rooms a really important aspect any little air gap is going to allow sound to get through so there's a certain level of sound isolation or noise control that needs to be considered now for some cinemas it's easily enough managed don't watch a crazy loud terminator movie past 10 pm and you should be fine but then for those that go you know what i want to use this room any time of the day as loud as i want particularly if you're going to go for a reference level cinema these rooms are loud with our door ajar, cranking up some music con concerts, I can guarantee both my neighbors know all about it. And it's actually music concerts that are the biggest drama because that bass beat keeps on hitting, it doesn't stop, and that is really annoying. With movies, we actually get away with it a lot more because we have random spikes of sound and more natural sounds which kind of blend into maybe the noise of the neighborhood. So, if you're a music concert fan and you like it loud, you're absolutely going to have to think of noise control, sound isolation. Now that's both around the doors and the windows, the ceiling, and even potentially the walls, depending on the construction and the location of the house. So a great cinema is isolated from the rest of the house and particularly the neighbors. But then what about the comfort and the airflow of the room? We've sealed up the room. And now what about the fact that we absolutely need fresh, quality air. If we're going to be in this room for hours at a time, how we feel in the room is going to be impacted by the smells and the oxygen levels. So we need some level of ventilation or at the very least we need some cooling and some heating to make sure the room keeps at the right comfort level. So cinema rooms definitely run warm. If you're like us, we don't have the luxury of a room behind us to install all of our equipment. So our projector is actually in room, our equipment rack is in room, and all of that electronic componentry creates heat in the space. You then add people into the room and a complete lack of airflow, and you've now got a pretty muggy space. Something far from a luxurious and exciting place to be in. So having a cooling system is really, really critical. In this room, we've hit the heater maybe one or two times over winter. Very, very rare that we actually need heating, but absolutely as the room, as the climate outside gets a little bit warmer, we're gonna be hitting that aircon big time. So the air conditioner can cause problems. A, it can be a conduit of noise to other rooms. Two, it can be a cause of noise in the room if you've got a noisy machine. So look, split AC air cons, those on-wall units are a pretty cost-effective way of cooling this environment down. Setting into a low mode means that we can also keep um, the noise pretty passive, but they, they do need to take up some space. Now, this room already had a split AC, we utilize that, but it's a big white box on the wall. 
not an attractive thing at all. So we've actually hidden that inside a cowling or a, a bit of trim here. We've got a gap at the top for the airflow in. We've got a gap at the bottom for airflow out. And this it's a little bit older split aircon system is hidden away. You don't even notice it, but absolutely the cooling in here is critical. Now, the downside to this installation is that it's rather direct into this side of the room, which means these two seats, if we don't have the room nice and cool to begin with, and we need to get it cooler, these two seats are gonna be cold spots. So it's not a great location. We like to have the airflow probably more middle, um, in that middle space of the room, so it's not going direct into the seating, or even better, a specialty independent bulkhead ducted system where the airflow goes out of the room, through the ceiling space, gets cooled, and back through the other side of the bulkhead. That is a contained system. We contain the noise, we keep fresh airflow going, and we don't have cool spots for particular seats. So sometimes we've got to play with the room where it is. This room already had this unit here. We're gonna run with that for now. Uh, if we decide to stay here much longer, they'll probably go for a dedicated system through the other components of the room. So there's a whole lot of lighting in this room. We've actually got over 40 channels of colored lighting or the feature lighting and we've got another six channels actually make that seven of the primary lighting as we've got track lights down lights and spotlights to feature the room so all of that needs its own hub in this space we've actually mirrored the air conditioning cowling which was a fixed element that we had to work with in this room and then we've mirrored that across in here so it's quite a seamless uh, little bit of trim but behind the scenes we have the main lighting hub specific to this room. So we've got mains cable rolling through. We've got our primary lighting dimmers over here on the left. That's a beautiful control for automation platform. And then over on the right, we've got a, a DMX multi-channel colored light system, it has its own power supplies and allows us to control all different range of colors and features in the room. Uh, and this, you know, it takes up some space and it definitely takes up a serious amount of cabling. So we need a plan we need a location so this can be tucked away, serviceable, manageable, and out of sight when really it's showtime. All right, so these some pretty serious equipment running in these rooms. And well, we know that the projector needs its spot, center middle, right in front of that screen. There's a bit of location and space required for that. We've had a little look at um, where some of the lighting hubs, they also need space as well. Then these, the audio equipment and the source devices, the device you actually wanna play and use, need somewhere to go. So in this room, we've actually utilized the back corner of this room to hide our towers of power. Now, this is a demo space, so we have multiple systems running in here. So we've actually got two full-size racks, um, but don't worry, it's gonna look a little bit crazy uh, for a typical home. You're only gonna need one of these, or maybe even really half of one of these. So let's have a little look behind the scenes. A good example of where curtains come in very handy. We get a beautiful lush look and we hide the mechanics and the electronics and all the sort of technical stuff that people, a lot of people in the family just don't want to think about. And let's face it, as much as I love this componentry, when it comes time to actually enjoy a show, I don't want to think about this. I want to use the remote control, I want to hit play, I want to get that volume where I want it for what I want to listen to, lay back and forget about all this stuff. But it's a major junction for a lot of cabling, a lot of power, a lot of interconnectivity. And in this case, we got a whole bunch of things happening in demo room. We got new products coming and going. So this unit on casters can actually trolley out. We can get behind it and we can actually plug and play some new devices where you can get to it and actually um, maintain it uh, install new stuff, have some fun with it as well. So the things you really need in the rack is gonna be the sound processor, which is actually the main hub of the cinema system. All of the source devices, they're the playback devices like the Playstations, the Apple TVs, Nvidia Shields, Foxtel, 4K of course, with the satellite dish, Playstation, I've got other Apple TVs because we've got multiple systems in here media streamer players, all of these devices need to connect into what is the main cinema processor. Now that unit's also gonna decode the sound. It's gonna send the picture 
on its way to the projector while it then gets the actual signal for the speakers either amplified inside the one box, great way of saving some money and saving some um, space, but ideally a great and a high powered cinema is going to need more amplification than what a one box unit can typically supply. So you're going to end up with separate power amplifiers to drive the speakers and some power amplifiers say driving the front speakers are going to need three, 400 watts or so of power um, to actually get to the cinema reference levels uh, that's going to shape the natural, clean, powerful sound that we're actually gunning for. The effects channels, they're usually a little bit closer to the seat so we can get away with less power from those ones and a great way, a great strategy that some people would use is to use an all-in-one amplifier um, that runs most of the show, but juice it up by adding some extra power to the front speakers. It's a great way of going to save some money. So we've got some all-in-one amplifiers in here. This one's an all-in-one. The Marantz here is a processor. It's a dedicated processor linking to the separate power amps. While on the left here, you can't see it too well because it's stashed right in here. We've used up every millimeter we could in this room. So we're using what was the old door arch to actually get the system as far back as possible. But here we've got more source devices, as we mentioned. We've got the amazing Storm Audio Cinema Processor. This is a truly reference piece of kit. Um, certainly some of the very best cinemas in the world feature likes of the Storm Audio. It runs a crazy amount of speakers. You can run like 30 speakers off this thing. We don't need that many in this room, but the quality is outstanding. We've got that moving into uh, separate power amplification dedicated for our, uh, our A system, our primary system here. The disc player, I forgot that one before. So I usually run ultra discs. I actually get the discs from the, um, from the shops, big pile of them. I have some fun collecting, just like record store day. And um, this is a fantastic way of the best quality uh, for movies. Now the Apple TV gets a lot of usage as well, though it, it's not quite the same. It's a little bit compressed. But I tell you what, the quality we get just by hitting a button on Apple is it beats anything we could get our hands on like 10 years ago. So I mean, um, yeah, access to great stuff is, is too easy. Um, now power filters, down at the bottom of the rack here, we've actually got a power filter, which actually cleans up the gritty power that comes in. So where we are, we've got about 240 volts. Sometimes you can regulate that, but absolutely, we want to filter out all of the sort of buzz, the hum, all the grit of the power. Um, so our electronics here have got clean power and that does give better sound and picture. So it's a nice way of, of um, improving a system it can just be through the mains power system as well. So the idea of these racks is that also allows airflow to flow through the components. These do get warm, like I mentioned before, so you may need some extraction fan to remove the heat in a given environment. We actually have got away with a passive setup where the curtains here are a few inches short of the floor, so that allows an intake in. And then we've got a pretty easy, gentle, um, passive cooling out the top. Uh, we did have a fan system in backup here, but it turns out we haven't had to use it and we're actually moving more to what we call a D-class amplification, which means um, it's a new style of technology. It runs cooler. So we can have an extraordinary amount of power in this room and not a lot of heat in the rack, which is super cool. Uh, so we've got some flexibility around that, but again, that's gonna be a major part of the design considerations. What equipment is gonna change the rack and the cooling needs of the room as well. Home Automation Hub lives in the rack as well, and that's connected either through the internet protocols, IP, or in the case of the Apple, we got a little flasher thing here. So that's actually hardwired into this equipment. Um, it looks like a lot to, to handle, but seriously, you just have to hit watch Foxtel on the remote, and if the system's not on, it will boot up. That's what you're gonna see. Get the volume, get the channel you want. That's all you have to think about. So that's the automation processor living in here amongst this equipment. Uh, kind of taming the beast a bit. Data is a big factor. All of this equipment is going to run off internet, particularly, of course, the Apple TVs. That's where they get their content. But it's also the protocols in which automation, uh, control, um, and serviceability can also run as well. So we usually have about 16 ports of hardwired data running into a typical cinema room. So you can imagine the cabling back here 
becomes pretty epic. You know, we've got 13 speakers, we've got 16 ports of data, we've got control interfaces, we've got mains power, we've got the HDMI connectivity. There's a whole lot here to manage. All of our work is labeled very clearly. So if anyone needs to work on it, you can plumb that back in, get back up and running. Serviceability on these projects are everything. Because I can tell you, once you get used to enjoying your home cinema, you are not gonna be happy when it doesn't work. <laughs>